One thing that I don't really see a lot of in people's Minecraft medieval builds is, well, the small stuff. You know, like the little builds and the environmental stuff that really just ties the entire project together. It's one thing to have an enormous cool looking castle, but if you've got nothing around it, it's kind of mid. In today's video, we're going to be looking at nine different builds packed with detail that are all going to be great in your medieval city or any kind of medieval build. And because I'm feeling a little bit spicy, we're going to be doing this whole video with with shaders on. Without further ado, let's get into the builds. Number one, some barracks for your knights or your militia. Well, I guess it's more of like a training area than a barracks, but yeah, you know, same idea. Check this out. I've got this whole little setup here. And of course, this is the first of many builds in this video. And trust me, these are all going to be packed with detail. Let's just take a quick look at what I got here. Starting off on the left, we've got some storage. We've got some spare armor and weapons. We've got a couple bows lying around over here. We got some some really funny cute little like training dummies here. I wanted to incorporate the target block and an armor stand so you know you could have people standing all the way back here practicing their aim with a crossbow or just swinging at it with a sword. Got some spare hay over here for like I don't know horses or <laughs> if the soldiers get really hungry or something. Got some logs here because why not? Got another bow sitting on that log there. And last but definitely not least I've got some tents for our little military encampment over here. I've got two. They're pretty much the same. TBH. Got some tiny little beds for the little dudes to sleep sleeping down here. I got a little bit of storage, but yeah, we're starting off strong with this cute little build right here. I really think this one came together very well. And you know, if you have a castle, you're going to need people to defend it. And those people defending your castle are going to need a place to live, a place to sleep, and most importantly, a place to practice. Number two, some open air market stalls. One of my favorite parts of any medieval city is the market square, the place where all the townsfolk gather together to barter their items, buy and sell their goods and just catch up on the day's gossip. And of course, no town square would be complete without a little market stall. In particular, I'm going for an open air market stall here, not like a proper store or anything. Step on through the banner here, you can really see all the little itty bitty bits of detail and decoration that I put into this place. We're going with a pretty funky color palette of mainly red and white. Of course, that's the sandstone and the mangrove up here and the red and white wool for the rest of the market stall. And then we got a whole lot of textures on the bottom here because, you know, you're, you're shopkeeps are standing here all day. There's probably people running through here and trying to haggle and barter for goods and stuff. So you've really got a lot of foot traffic in this area. That's why the floor here is frankly uh, such a mess. Somebody really needs to like sweep up the place. I don't know. One thing I especially love doing for builds like this is actually using bamboo as like a tent pole. Oh, hi. That was a uh, <laughs> real close there. Using bamboo as a tent pole like this, I think looks really nice. And I wish people would do it more often. Any kind of medieval town square or shop Shopping district is going to be littered with these kinds of builds, so make sure you include one as well. Number three, a blacksmith shop. Another very important staple of any medieval town is, of course, the blacksmithing shop. Once again, going for a very different color palette here. Up at the top, it's very reminiscent of like a two-door house, which as some of you guys might know, I am a very big fan of. But I'm getting real creative down here with this like very hodgepodge little staircase going down from the second floor where the blacksmith would actually live. Ignore this. Definitely very finished interior. Got a funny little planter box up here and if we make our way downwards you can see where the blacksmith actually does their work. We've got three key elements here. We've of course got the forge where you're heating the metal, we're cooking the stuff. I don't really know how blacksmithing works, not gonna lie. I just kind of copied this from the Sky Forge in Skyrim. You got this big old cooker thing here probably for refining the metals. Once again I don't really know what I'm talking about but it looks cool. And lastly you've got a little bit of a smithing station over here with some water to you know cool down the metal and of course an anvil to hammer out the stuff. And arguably my favorite part of the entire build is actually in here where we've got a bit of like a storeroom and kind of show off area for all the different weapons and armor that the blacksmith has been creating and a place to store any additional tools. You know we got like an anvil and a grindstone over here. You know the texturing and stuff is pretty cool on the outside. I think I did a nice job with the glow lichen and the moss and whatnot. But to me the star of this build is this lovely little rustic interior right here. Number four, some gallows. You know, when you put enough people in one place, there's going to be disagreements. And well, what better way to settle a disagreement than by hanging somebody with a gallows? That is not actual life advice. We got this funny little build right here, a little bit on the smaller side compared to some of the ones I've showed you previously. But like I've been saying over the course of this video, it's not the sheer scale of the build that matters today. Today, we're talking about detail. And this build definitely has quite a lot of it from this trap 
trapdoor floor to the way these pillars are spaced out on top of this thing to give it kind of like an elevated look. And of course, the uh, piece de la resistance or whatever the French say about it. The actual hanging nooses. <laughs> it's a little bit hard to see here, but these are actually leads dangling uh, invisible chickens. So <laughs> that's pretty cool, I guess. In my opinion, this was the best way to portray like a hanging noose in Minecraft. I know there actually isn't like a noose or whatever, but you know, maybe, maybe, maybe the knots untied. I don't know. Invisible hanging chickens are the way to go, folks. But yeah, really trying to take advantage of the detail here. I actually use the debug stick quite a bit in this build to make these walls look the way I wanted them to with these sides poking out here, even though there's no block to connect to them. But yeah, so you know, in your medieval town, it's not always about killing people. Sometimes you have to bring in new folks from faraway lands. Number five, an exotic traveling caravan. This build was fantastic. I am incredibly proud of the color choices being used in this build here. You know, I haven't had too many opportunities to really mess around with mangrove wood to its fullest extent, so I'm really happy to have this opportunity to use kind of a more like off-kilter wood color, especially once again combining it with birch and the dark prismarine and the warped wood here. This one just came out super, super well. I'm incredibly proud of this shape the colors, and most importantly, the level of detail. I'm imagining travelers coming on in from faraway lands, arriving in this here caravan, peddling wares and exotic goods from very strange and mysterious places. I really love the way the storage came out here too, once again using a little bit of debug stick action. Of course, this is where a horse or two or three would go, but I kind of neglected the horse aspect, and just kind of used the debug stick to make it look like there's supposed to be something here. Coming around the back here, we got a little bit of like a banner droop down off of the side using the carpets and of course the banner block to uh, kind of make that illusion. I really wish there wasn't a gap there, but oh well. And these wheels are pretty funky. They're kind of like a little bit sunken into the ground, which, you know, definitely makes sense considering this thing is probably very heavy and had to roll on in across the dirt and whatnot. But yeah, this barrel button and the trap door design is frankly really cool. I absolutely love this build and I plan on making a tutorial on it in the future, so keep an eye out for that. Number six, a water well. This is definitely one of our smallest builds here, but it's a very important one nonetheless. Back in the old days, fresh water was very hard to come by, so frankly, it's uh, it's very likely that this here well is contaminated with cholera, but thankfully uh, they haven't added cholera to Minecraft yet, so I think we're good for the time being. Using a very funky kind of off-the-wall palette here for the roof with the exposed copper and the mud bricks, I think they actually go together pretty well. I was trying to go for like a rusted old tin roof here kind of I've just, you know, just wide enough to cover up the hole in the ground where the water is coming from. I've got this really cool little crank design here with the grindstone and the lightning rods pulling this cauldron full of water up from down where the water is down there. And I'm using an invisible item frame here with a lever on it. And I debug sticked this fence to be poking out on both ends. And now we've got this crank that you can actually turn. It's crazy. And I absolutely love this little detail here. The amount of immersion that little tiny lever gives is honestly really Really, really cool. I just really wish this cauldron could move up and down. Number seven, some communal gardens or green spaces. Medieval castles and kingdoms were often surrounded by acres and acres of farmland because, well, of course you had to feed all the people that were living in the city. And of course in today's video, we're not really worrying about what's outside the medieval city, but frankly, you can still add in communal gardens and green spaces where people can grow their own crops. And that's exactly what we've created here. This one is definitely a bit on the simpler side, but still I think there's a lot of merit to just having little tiny, you know, raise crop beds or flower beds or anything you like, just kind of sitting around every once in a while in your medieval city. I'm once again using the debug stick here to make these two tall sunflowers where the bottom half of the sunflower is actually duplicated on the top half here. The stuff you can do with the debug stick is frankly phenomenal. But yeah, you know, I'm sprinkling in some dead crops with the dead bushes and, you know, a couple little different kinds of crops. We got potatoes and over here a little bit of like a primitive, you know, compost trash kind of bin filled with mud and, you know, podzol and other unsavory blocks because that's where all the refuse and the compost and probably all the human waste as well. It's probably where all that goes, TBH. So yeah, you know, not the most fun thing to think about, but guys, we're going for realism and immersion today, so we gotta include it. Definitely consider adding in some sort of crop bed or garden into your build. It really doesn't take that long to make and the amount of life and detail you get out of it is frankly amazing. 
Number eight, riverside or oceanside docks. Historically speaking, almost every ancient city was built near water. So in my opinion, you gotta have some docks to go along with the rest of your city. It just makes a lot of sense, realistically speaking. You know, a lot of trade was done over water, a lot of transportation was done over water, and now we're kind of just adding to that immersion, you know? I'm changing up the block palette a little bit here. We're going with some bricks and granite and whatnot on the inside, just because, you know, why not? I thought it would look nice. And for the actual structure of the pier here, we're going for like some grays and greens and that kind of stuff, and just really trying to give off the vibe that it's, you know, old and waterlogged and covered in, you know, kelp and vines and all that other icky stuff that you'd find on your average dock. Of course, we've got the docks themselves that are made out of spruce. I actually was able to get most of this build constructed in a time lapse, and uh, yeah, just ignore the fact that I've got jungle wood on screen for you right here. I was originally experimenting with jungle wood, and uh, yeah, it didn't really turn out quite the way I wanted, so I just kind of emergency swapped it all over for spruce. The greens and grays, the orange and reds, and the brown of the spruce go together fantastically. And number nine, a good old fashioned medieval tavern. Here we are once again in my medieval tavern build from my video, Three Ways to Build a Medieval Tavern in Minecraft. You guys absolutely loved this build, and I don't blame you at all. This is quickly becoming one of my favorite builds that I've ever put together in Minecraft. Just the sheer amount of detail and warmth and complexity in every aspect of this little tavern here is something that I am incredibly proud of. And because of that, I really felt that it belonged in this video. Even though it's an older build that I am reusing, I really do think that the style and general vibe of this place just fits in so well. And if you're interested in learning how to make this medieval tavern, I believe I've got a tutorial up for it already, which you guys can go check out. But yeah, guys, I think we'll take after the old medieval travelers of all the fantasy novels and end our day in the tavern. Gonna sit down at the stool, put my feet up, have a nice mug of generic beverage and just unwind for the rest of the night. So if you enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like on it. And of course, if you are not subscribed, I would consider doing that as well. I would very much appreciate that. And until next time, guys, this has been Leon and I will see you guys in the next Minecraft video. Take care, you guys. Appreciate you a lot.